How do you find time for sex when children are involved, okay? Hi everyone, welcome back to this week's video. I am actually going to be tackling on a question that I got from a friend. I asked her, if you could ask one question, what would it be? And this is the question that she asked. So I'm going to actually tackle on this question in this video. On the bottom right hand corner of this video, you'll see a picture of me. Yes, if you click that, it will take you directly to a subscribe button. So just go ahead and click on there. It will put you on the subscribe. You can just click right there or you can click the red button below if you're familiar with YouTube. Anyways, for those of you that recently subscribed to my channel, thank you so much for doing so. I really appreciate it. How do you find time for sex when children are involved? Mm. Well, let me tell you. So I broke it down into three categories. Number one, how important is sex in your relationship? That's something that you guys both need to sit down and talk about. Um, and you guys need to talk about how frequently you guys actually want to be having sex. So let's say you both sit down and you guys both discuss it. And he says, you know what? I would at least want three days out of the week. And then you say, you know what? Three days isn't so bad. I can give you three days. Okay, so now you know you guys are on the same page. But that discussion needs to take place. Essentially, you need to have that conversation out loud. You definitely want to take into consideration schedules, children, all that stuff when you guys are having that conversation. Um, and you don't want to be biased. So for example, say you're a stay-at-home mom or whatever and you take care of the children and you're exhausted or he works and, uh, and when he comes back, he's exhausted you have to take all those things into consideration when having that conversation anyways so have that conversation come and meet halfway if you guys are like really really far off but if you guys are on the same page already that's even better but you need to have that conversation how important is sex in your relationship have that conversation openly with each other and then come to a mutual agreement of how many times or how frequently you guys want to engage in extracurricular activities. Number two is you have to prioritize. It means that if it is something that you guys want more of in your relationship or if it's an aspect of your relationship that you actually do want to focus on or put more energy towards, then you actually have to prioritize it. I heard a story one time that actually like was really, really funny. So this woman was talking about her relationship with her husband and she said every time they're about to engage in sexual activities, the children begin to cry. Like it just happens so frequently that she almost felt like these children children are doing this thing intentionally and because the husband was so worried about the children every single time they would stop they literally would not engage with each other they would constantly just stop so they found themselves in a predicament where they weren't engaging or they weren't having sex just because the children would always cry at that point in my personal opinion I feel like if your relationship with your husband is a little bit tarnished it affects the children so the first priority in my marriage is my husband so I my husband comes first <laughs> I know this doesn't sit right with our society nowadays where it's like children should come first but look where that's gotten us I feel like if mom and dad are happy everything else works so for me when I say prioritize it literally means you have to put that first if that's something that's important to you guys then you have to put that first so for example if you're about to engage in sexual activity and a child cries Unless you really know it's an emergency because parents, we know when it's an emergency, right? If you know it's an emergency, then you can stop. But if it's not an emergency, do your do. Child can cry. Crying has never killed nobody. Let the child cry. Do what you got to do or whatever. If you need to tune it out, you got to learn to tune it out with children. You got to just learn to just tune it out with children. When you're done, you can tend to your child. But if every time a child cries, you're just like, oh, oh, oh hold up a second you never gonna have sex. Again, as a disclaimer, if it's an emergency only, then you can tend to the child. But you know, some children just cry just for attention. If you, you know how children are, it's almost like, you know, oh my goodness, let no child put asunder. Seriously, let these children not come between you. Are you serious? Your marriage should be that important. 
Something that I think people never take into consideration is your children will grow up and leave you, but your relationship would be there. So if you never put anything into your relationship or fostered your relationship, that's going to be a problem when your children actually leave. Plus, you're not showing them an example, a proper example of what a marriage is. When you're in this marriage, then your marriage should be first. You should pay attention to each other's needs and focus on those. And my third point is schedule it. You have to put it down in a calendar somewhere. Put it on your phone. Like, you need to schedule it. And people can say, well, with scheduling it, wouldn't that just be boring because it's like planned for? Uh, no. Just like you schedule an appointment, does that make it like routine? No. I still have fun if I go to my appointment even though I scheduled it. Uh, no. Schedule it. It just means that you're prioritizing that thing. So if both of you decide, okay, the children go to bed at 8 o'clock. Okay, do we spend some time watching TV first together? Do we have alone time first? Or am I scheduling in a sex section? A sex session in between that or before bed? Or, um, or is it gonna be a lunch break thing? I mean, you really have to pencil this in, right? Also, a tip that really, really goes along with the scheduling is you have to realize that sex is not about you in that moment. Although you do get gratified yourself, the focus should be the other person, right? And the way to do that is having turns. So if Mondays are for her, then the focus would be her. If Wednesdays are for him, then the focus would be him. So it would be whatever that individual wants to gratify their needs, okay? So say it's her day and you are gonna be focusing on being sensual. So love making, slow, taking it slow, or whatever, appeasing her. Or maybe she likes a massage and teasing, or maybe, I, I, I know that women, we like to talk, I like to talk. So if it's my turn, shoot, I want to be intimate with conversation. Um, and I know for him, he might not like the same thing. So when it is his turn, I can shut my mouth and do what I gotta do. Get it? Like, stop talking, stop talking, stop talking. So pretty much picking the person's day. So say if it's his day and he wants to bang it out, then that's what he wants to do that day and you have to be on board. And I feel like that way, everybody's needs is met. So it's not like, oh, we're just gonna not have a plan and just wham bam this thing or whatever and stuff like that. And then what ends up happening is if your needs are not met, you're gonna be super frustrated. You're gonna be angry. You're gonna be bitter. You're not gonna say anything, especially on the female side because I've had a lot of conversation with women that are married that don't say anything to their husbands. But we, I think it's time that we actually do say stuff because you're gonna be frustrated and you're gonna be lashing out at him and he doesn't understand what's going on. So it's actually better for you to clarify the situation. My final tip is have fun. Make it fun. Make it something that you guys actually want to sneak around. It's fun to sneak around around your children. It really is fun to sneak around. Like, so if you put them for a nap, get it in somehow. At different phases of a child's life, you can figure ways around it. So if it's nap time, if it's bedtime, then you know, okay, my children are at a phase where I have to plan it around nap time or I have to plan it at night time. For me right now, we have a one-year-old, a two-year-old, and a six-year-old. And so for us, it usually mostly falls at bedtime. So you put your kids to bed and then you plan it out however you want to plan it out. And there's lots of time because if you're going to bed, there is a ton of time, a ton of time. Is this going to be a long thing? or is this going to be a quick thing? That's something to take into consideration as well when you come up with your decision. So I hope these answers help with this question, how to engage in extracurricular activities, AKA sex, 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 when children are involved. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video and would want more of these videos, please do comment to interact with me. If you're bold enough, comment below. How do you get around your children? What works for you? I would like to hear you guys' feedback and interact with you guys even more than I do right now. If you're not subscribed already, I cannot say it enough. Please do show me some love and support by subscribing to my channel. Like this, comment, uh, and share. <laughs> Don't forget to share. I will see you guys in the next week's video.